It is not how much you have that is important to God. It is how it's being used. And all that you'll ever be for an eternity is being determined right now. Remember again what Jesus Christ said, and we'll look at it later. If you're not faithful in the smallest of things, money, you shall not be faithful in larger things. Stewardship. That's the principle that God wants us to understand. A steward is a manager of another person's property, and that's what God wants us to be, to believe that literally God owns it, and we're simply managing it for God. You know, isn't it strange today that a young couple gets married and somehow believe that within three years they can accumulate what it took their parents 30 years to accumulate? And so they set out buying a home larger than they should. And rather than settling for a two-bedroom, one-bath home, they want a five-bedroom, three-bath home. And they buy a new car and refrigerators and lawnmowers and washing machines and all the rest. And then at the end of three years, you know what they've accumulated? Debt. That problem is something called indulgence, buying things that we literally cannot afford to own. Or another problem that young couples have today is something called ignorance. Ignorance is not stupidity now. Ignorance is the lack of understanding. You know that you can go through grammar school, high school, college, and get a Ph.D. in America, and yet never take a course on how to balance a checkbook or how to buy an insurance policy, and yet everybody's going to have to do that. And do you know that many young couples grow up in a home where they see their parents, particularly their mom, using credit cards, and mom buys gasoline on credit cards and clothes on credit card, even Christmas toys on credit card, and so they begin to feel like credit cards are the answer to most problems. How many parents do you know at the end of that time call on their children and say, guys, remember when we charged all this stuff? Now we must sacrifice to pay it off. They don't. And so by inference, what we're doing is we're keeping our children ignorant about how to handle money properly. Remember this, though. Credit is not a problem. It has never been a problem. It is the indicator of problems. The misuse of credit is really the problem. First, through indulgence, buying things you can't afford to own, and second, through ignorance, not having the right facts to make the decisions properly. How about being a little cooperative for once? Maybe I'm just tired of cleaning up your messes. Now, what's that supposed to mean? You know, hitting your parents up was your idea. Don't forget that. No, oh, I haven't forgotten. I dream about it. How could I be so stupid? I guess to some people it just comes natural. Okay, Buster. You tell me how we're going to pay him back. You're so smart, you figure it out. I have. Or not. Look at this. We're overcharged on our credit cards, we're overdrawn at the bank, and we're two months behind on the house payment. Do you know how humiliating that is? My father is a wealthy, influential man, and I'm married to a... To a what, dear? What do you think? Let me share with you perhaps the simplest economic principle ever written. If you don't borrow money, you can't get into debt. Therefore, if you don't borrow any more money, you cannot get further into debt. Let me share something else with you. Do you know that I've never had a couple come saying, Larry, we wanted to share with you our five-year goal. We got married five years ago, and when we did, we set out to get ourselves so miserably into debt that I can't stand my wife anymore, she can't stand me anymore, and all we do is fuss and fight and yell all the time but we're exactly where we wanted to be. Nobody ever says that. Every couple I've ever counseled has said exactly the same thing. How in the world do you get into a mess like this? You get into it several ways. Ignorance and indulgence are the two most common ways, and the third that we'll discuss, uh, which is slothfulness. Let me describe to you some of the symptoms that a young couple will go through. Now, this young couple set out to do the normal things that everybody set out to do, and that's buy a nice home, buy a nice car, then you need a refrigerator and a washing machine and a sewing machine and a lawnmower and all the rest. At the end of about three years, what they found is they've generated a lot of debt. Month by month, sometimes they can pay it, sometimes they cannot. They've gotten themselves into a crisis. And what will often happen is that something unusual will happen. A refrigerator will break down, which causes an extra outflow of money. 
or worst of all, a young couple living on both of their incomes finds that the wife got pregnant and lost her job. At that point, whether they're Christians or not, you know what happens? If you're a Christian, you sit down to read the Bible, nothing comes to mind but problems. You sit down to pray, nothing comes to mind but problems. Every time husband and wife get together, there's friction because they're always arguing about money over and over and over again. And it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. After a while, they find out as these debts have built up, you know, the, the debts are about this high per month and the income's only about this high per month, they take the next logical sequence of events in treating that symptom. Naturally, they consolidate their bills. Everybody does that. Takes all these big monthly bills, shrinks them down a little bit, but stretches them out for a longer period of time, and that solved the problem, right? Unfortunately, it does not solve the problem because they go right back to doing what they were doing before, and then within about a year, they're deeper in debt than ever before. Now they've got to build consolidation loan as well, and the pressures are even greater. And then they enter phase two, where they believe we need more money. And the only source of money available to them is for the wife to go to work. So she goes to work, generating a greater level of income. But they also gener generate a greater level of spending because of their past habits. And within about a year, they're deeper in debt than ever before. Now the pressures are even greater. So they begin to think, you know, I cannot stand all this pressure. I think I'll buy a new car. And so usually the husband will go out and buy a brand new automobile. Why would they do something like that when they're in debt? You know why? So they would feel worthy. Because in our society today, if you can't buy new things, you don't feel very worthy. Come on. Come here. Take a look at it. I just got it. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, I bought it. Come on, let's we go for a ride. We can't afford hey, come a Come on, lighten up a little car. bit. Get in the car. J.W., you know, what am I supposed to do? Would you get in the car for? for? Come on, let's just go for a ride. Idiot. We can't afford it. Would you lighten up a little bit, huh? Look, I got Forget the car it, for you. Forget it, No, I'm sorry. Cora. I'm sorry. Forget it. At that point, the pressures get even greater on the wife because she senses the emotional pressure of not being able to pay the existing bills. Now the bills are even higher, and she can't pay them. They're no longer communicating about anything. In fact, they're fighting and arguing every time they get together, and the car will often be the focal point of that argument. I am working myself into an early grave, and you take, take, take. I can't make money as fast as you spend. Look, here's today's mail. I can't even believe the number of bills that just came today. That That's right, and you wouldn't have bills like that if you didn't have to live in a car. How am I supposed to pay it? Whose idea was it to buy the house in the first place? To keep place? up with your rich, influential father. Oh, yeah. Whose father? Let me tell you, buddy. You're the one. The most woman that ever walked on the face of the earth. And so they drift on this way for a while. Now it's worse, right? The payments for the car start coming in. They drift on into the fourth year and maybe even the fifth year. And they suddenly decide, you know what? I don't think this is worth it anymore. You know, I can't stand my wife, and my wife can't stand me, or she thinks I can't stand him anymore. If I could just get out of this and start all over again, everything would be much better. And that's often what happens. In fact, in 52% of the cases of, in America, in the fifth year of marriage, couples get a divorce because of financial pressures. About 92% of all of Americans say when they get a divorce, they believe what destroyed their marriage was financial pressure. And yet the average couple's making over $25,000 a year, by the way, they get a divorce. So this couple gets a divorce, they go out and find two more people, exactly like the two they divorced, they marry them, and within two years you've got two more couples doing exactly the same thing that caused the first marriage to divorce. In fact, in 75% of the cases of the second marriage, it will dissolve in less than five years for exactly the same reason that the first marriage dissolved. 92 or 93% of the time, they say, money. See, they didn't treat the problem. They treated a symptom in their lives. Money was not a problem. It was a symptom. Or many couples take the other alternative. They get into that fourth and fifth year and can't stand the financial pressures anymore. And in our society, we are encouraged to take bankruptcy. That's where you wipe out all the old bills and you start all over again. And many couples think, if I can just get rid of all this pressure, everything will be fine. So they take bankruptcy. And then they start back doing exactly the same things they had done before because their credit is good again, at least with the small loan companies. And within about three years, they find themselves right back exactly at the same position. Only now you can't take bankruptcy because you can only take bankruptcy once every seven years. And so they're worse off than before. What's happened is they've lost hope. The consolidation loans didn't help. The wife working didn't help. Uh, buying things didn't work out. And even going bankrupt didn't work out. And they've lost hope. 